Fine ladies and fine gentlemen of the countryside, welcome to Foundation. My name, of course, is Obda Potato, and uh, and this is a nifty little sort of city builder strategy game. Uh, and I think uh, we're gonna have a little a little explore into the world of Foundation. So, right, without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm gonna be playing on the fluvial map, and uh, I'm just gonna be jumping straight in. Now, I I've played a bunch of this game already. I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. So we're not going to be dealing with any of this nonsense tutorialization stuff. And you're going to have to rely on yours truly uh, to try and extrapolate the uh, the information from the game and explain it to you in as, uh, as cognizant and as clear a way as possible. Also, before we uh, before we officially start the, uh, the playthrough, I should in fact note that this game does have grass. This game does indeed have grass. However, I have turned the grass off... I have turned the grass off because uh, because it can make things look slightly weird and a little bit funky when uh, when it sort of waves in the wind. So I've just I've just turned it off, just 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 making everyone aware. Uh, but it does it does indeed have grass. Right. So uh, this is a this is a colony sort of simulation strategy management game. Uh, just just right up my alley, really. Uh, now the first thing that we need to do is is choose a sort of starting location. Uh, within which we can we can expand and build a wonderful little colony. Now, uh, we can either choose an inland bit of turf, or we can choose a a rivered bit. I think we're going to go for an inland uh, bit at the moment. As you can see, it's completely free, so we shouldn't have any difficulty uh, affording it. Uh, so to speak. Now, uh, the game sort of tutorializes itself in terms of the fact that it gives you a whole bunch of, like, little mini objectives to uh, to accomplish. But, you know, within that sort of framework, you're kind of free to explore and do whatever the heck you want to do. So, we're going to head into the build menu. Uh, as you can see, there are three sort of subdivisions. There is the general section, the monument section, and the decoration section. Obviously, we're still the fairly early uh, early stage so there's not very much that we can uh, there's not very much that we can actually do yeah let's um let's place down the village center and bada bim bada boom what do you know we get a whole bunch of extra stuff added to the build menu uh we get uh, we get a whole bunch of little dudes and dudettes down here which is very very nice indeed that's a pretty dodgy that's a pretty dodgy uh dodgy painting i must say you lily you have been you have been You've been robbed. I don't know how much you paid for it, but it was too much. Too much. Anyway, uh, we got a couple of new quests. Place a lumber camp. Now, a lumber camp will produce wood for us. I mean, look, you don't have to be... You don't have to be... You don't have to be like a uh, like a genius to work out, you know, sort of the mechanics here. These are sort of uh, tried and tested mechanics in strategy colony management games. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's not it's not super it's not super complicated stuff. Uh, we are going to wait for the builder. However, we haven't actually assigned a builder, so therefore I'm going to assign Lillian as a builder. Congratulations, you've been assigned uh, a builder, and that should indeed mean. That, uh, that Lillian, you can go and yeah, you can go and build a lumber camp. Here you are. There you are. Get to work. Thank you very much. You're unhappy. You're very unhappy. Well, it looks like you're unhappy, although you're pretty mediocrely unhappy. In fact, you don't you don't even feel anything at the moment, right? You just feel numb. I get it. I know how it. I know how it is. I see. I see what the situation is. Anyway, uh, we'll go through the motions, sort of just the beginning, the beginning motions of getting everything set up. We'll stick it into three times speed because I don't think that there's anything particularly interesting that we're waiting for. Uh, assign a woodcutter. Yes, indeed, we shall do that. Uh, we're going to click on the lumber camp and assign a villager. We can assign up to three uh, villagers to work at the lumber camp. And to be honest, we're going to do just that. Uh, because, I mean, no one else is no one else is employed. Now, one of the things that I love about this game is that it sort of creates... It creates its own pathways uh, to destinations. So as we build out our city, uh, it'll, it'll sort of... It'll get this very sort of natural feel, which is really quite unique, actually. Instead of building paths... You know, the paths that people take in order to get to a specific building, that becomes the path. And it just makes everything feel very natural. And it just sort of all works quite nicely. Anyway, uh, there is no extraction zone for the woodcutter. Now, another thing that I really enjoy about this game 
is that it's got these things. It's got these things called uh, called extraction zones, and there's two paintbrushes on the screen, and I always get confused at which one it actually is. But it's this one up here, and we can paint the development zones. And uh, there are two zones that we can currently paint at the moment, kind of like city skylines, I guess. You know, where you where you zone specific like industries, or you know, you zone a commercial area or a residential area. Kind of the same thing here, uh, you know. So we've got Forbidden Land. If we don't ever want any of our uh, any of our population to venture into the Forbidden Land, uh, we can paint a little bit over there. Uh, but for the most part, we want all of the resources in this area. Want all of the resources in this area. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why painting the zone sounds like you know dragging nails down a dragging long nails down a chalkboard. That's or a blackboard, whatever. It's not It's not a great sound, I gotta confess, but there you go. I like the mechanic. I really do indeed like the mechanic of, uh, of, of the extraction zones. And just like that, all of uh, all of the lumberjacks are gonna get straight to work. Woodcutters, lumberjacks, you get the picture. They're gonna get straight to work and they're gonna start producing me a whole bunch of wood, which is, uh, which is up in the top left-hand corner. There's also tools and also berries. We ain't got much at the moment. Okay. We have a new quest to produce some berries. Well, I just happen to know that the berries are produced via a gathering hut, which has got an upfront cost of 20 gold. As you can see, gold up in the top left-hand corner. Also a little bit of wood, and uh, we've also got a little bit of a maintenance cost to that as well. So I guess we'll put the... We'll put the gathering hut right about yonder. As you can see, the path just sort of naturally starts to develop over time. Maybe I'll try turn the grass on. The reason that I turned the grass off, as I've said, as, as I've already said, is that it does sort of like sway in the wind and uh, and gives this really sort of disconcerting, disconcerting effect uh, that really can either, you know, induce motion sickness or just create just like a horrible, horrific uh, mess on screen. Yeah, with lot. Yeah, it's just not. It's just not even worth contemplating. But you know what? The the wind doesn't look too fierce at the moment, which is uh, which is some form of relief. Let's get some foragers assigned. Brilliant. So three foragers into the gathering hut. They should already be able to access uh, the berries because we've already painted our extraction zone around the berries anyway. So that should all just work, I believe. Yeah, that should absolutely work. Anyway, so I've already talked about the paths, which is something that I really, really like about this game. Um, we'll talk more about the way in which villagers house themselves, which is another aspect of this game, which I really, really like. Uh, let's build a granary. Sure, we'll build a granary right here in the town. Yep, yeah, sure. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how uh, how the housing situation works and how I really, really like that. And, uh, and we'll also talk about uh, a few other bits and bobs of uh, a few other little features of this game that I'm quite a large fan of. Including, I guess, sort of like the evolution system or the, the people evolution system. Anyway, uh, we are in need of some stone. Yes, we are indeed in need of some stone. Now, there's a little bit of stone hidden in this uh, in this grass over here. We're going to need to get ourselves a stone cutter's camp, I do indeed believe. Yeah, why don't we stick that over there? How wonderful. And let's also see if we can add this to the extraction zone. Yeah, there we go. And there's no reason not to add everything here to the extraction zone. I mean, there's no reason yet. I'm sure I'm sure there'll be a reason in the future, you know, where we might want to, to get rid of that. But, um, but for now, we don't need to worry about it. Anyway, uh, Lillian is going to get straight to work on this stonecutter's camp. We've still got, what, two people? Two people who are without um, without employment, I believe, which is not exactly ideal. We are going to go through the motions of getting some more employees. Not employees, uh, villagers. Villagers soon. That will indeed happen, but it's, uh, but it's not going to happen for a little while. Hold up. We only have one person. Right. Well, I mean, we need berries, but I kind of need stone a little bit more than I need berries. Dominique, you're going to be unassigned from your role in the... Uh, in the gathering hut, and instead you're going to be reassigned to be a stone miner, stone cutter, sure. Anyway, it's also worth me drawing attention to the fact that, um, you know, as everyone goes about their uh, their jobs, they can level up all of the different individual, uh, the individual jobs. So, for example, Lillian is now a level 2 builder, which 
I don't know if that counts as sort of a, you know, a, a cause for promotion. I don't know if that means that she's going to be paid slightly more. I don't know if that's going to mean that she's going to be paid slightly less. I have absolutely not got the foggiest idea uh, in the world. However, we'll talk a little bit about how that affects uh, evolution and, uh, and whatnot later on. Anyway, our granary has been completed. We are going to assign a new transporter. So we're going to assign a villager, but of course we don't have anyone at the moment. Let's unassign Thomas. And let's get, uh, let's get you to work in the granary instead. Now, transporter basically just moves resources around. It's pretty, pretty basic. And, uh, you know, we'll queue up berries. We'll queue up the granary to accept berries uh, here. So all of the resources that are currently being stored in the gathering hut, now it's, now there's none, uh, all of them are going to be stored in the granary, which means that we can continue producing berries to our heart's content, and it's all going to be grand. Right, we need to build a well, build a market, and assign a new market tender. Oh, this is this is another thing that I really very much enjoy about this uh, about this game. Uh, let's put the well somewhere far away. Um, now this is forbidden land, if I'm not mistaken, which means I kind of want to get rid of this forbidden land, as I only as I only actually put down forbidden land because. Uh, because I wanted to demonstrate exactly what the zoning mechanics actually were. But now that we've got that uh, all sorted, I'm sure there will be no issues in getting that well uh, built as quickly as possible. We also need to build a market. Now, I kind of want to build... Yeah, the market is going to be in the monument section, by the way. kind of want to build the markets a little bit further away from the town center, and the reason why will become apparent right now. Uh, so, you don't actually place a building for the market, another aspect of the game that I really rather enjoy. You instead place components that themselves make up a market. So, uh, for example, there's a food stall which we can use to, you know, sell food to our, uh, to our, to our people. And we're going to place down a food stall right over there. And uh, we're going to click start construction. Now, so for this specific market layout, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but there is a lot that this game has to offer, and it's it's quite good in the way that it approaches things. It's, it's a very, very nice little game. Um, yeah, it's going to cost us 10 wood, which is lovely. Upfront cost, none. 5 gold. Perfect. Sign me up. I'll absolutely do that. Now we uh, just need to wait for Lillian to, to get her stuff done, and uh, and that will be... That will be that. Brilliant. So, do we have anyone that's employed, unemployed at the moment? No. Everyone is fully occupied, which is exactly the way that it should be. Brilliant. So, when are you going to be? When are you going to be finished building this stall? Just now, as it turns out. So, we're going to need a market tender, and I do indeed think that we probably need to get somebody to take a little break from uh, from lumbering in the lumber camp, and instead we will assign you to the to the market where we are going to sell berries. Brilliant, and we go into parts, and then we assign an available villager. Bada bim, bada boom, just like that. So, Anna is going to be the uh, the person, the person who uh, who sells the berries, and we should indeed see her take her place behind the market stall. She's waving at everyone, and as you can now see, uh, Rudolph and uh, and Thomas both went up to the market stall, and as you can see, they both uh, they both consumed and bought a little bit of berryage. Now, also, it's a complete scam, but uh, but if you can actually believe it, we do in fact have our villagers produce berries basically for free, and then we sell the berries back to them. It's a total scam, but I flip and love it. I absolutely flip and love it. Right, so increase your population by maximizing immigration profitability. Assign a job to all your villagers. Unbelievably, if you assign jobs to all of your villagers, then supposedly that makes everyone happy. Don't ask me why. I don't know why people like to work. Not something that I'm really entirely sure about. Anyway, so the more happiness you have, the more likely people are to, uh, you know, to decide to, to decide to join up. And uh, and indeed, if we uh, if we little I'll take a little click on that event, then uh, then we can see two brave. Two brave individuals who are uh, who are making their way all the way down this uh, this wonderful hill, crafting a path of their own all the way over to our village, and that will indeed increase our population to uh, to ten serfs, I believe, or ten, yeah, ten people, ten people. And this, by the way, the surf thing 
has uh you know that will that will come into effect when we start talking about sort of evolution and whatnot which is very very exciting fantastic and that indeed means that we've got a few more a few more buildings which we can now build and we can also zone a brand new zone and also there is a message from the kingdom the kingdom recognizes your efforts in establishing your settlement i am but your humble servant Brilliant. So that's going to give us four crossy swords and uh, and four, I don't know, hammers. Sure, uh, will give me, will give me a quest of provo promote your first newcomers, unlock the warehouse from the labor estate panel. Now I will absolutely, absolutely click accept there, which is wonderful, and we now indeed have a uh, have a brand new quest. In fact, we've got two brand new quests, if I'm not mistaken. We've got the Promote Your First Newcomers quest, and we also have the Unlock the Warehouse from the Labor Panel, from the Labor Estate Panel quest. Now, what you just saw there was a little sort of snapshot of the diplomacy which is available, uh, which is available to the player in this game. So if we head up and we click on, it is, yeah, this, this tab, so the Estate Manager, right? the estate manager that will that will show us all of the influence that we have with the differing factions now as you see we got uh, we got four hammers from uh, from labor so that is that is the people basically that is the uh, that is the people of the land and with this influence we can wield a little bit of power as uh, as i talked about we can unlock the warehouse from the uh, from the menu here because we've got the 10 newcomer the 10 newcomer level people. Now, as you can see up in the top left-hand corner, we've got two newcomers and eight serfs. So this sort of, this is, this is the sort of evolutionary system that we have here. So at first we have newcomers. Newcomers are just, you know, regular old folk that, you know, come in from the wild and decide to join the village. We can then at, uh, at sequential points, at the end of every month, basically, so when when this uh, when this hits week four, day seven, we can effectively choose whether we want to upgrade our newcomers to serfs, upgrade our serfs to commoners, upgrade our commoners to citizens, etc., etc., etc. You get the point. There's this very there's this very sort of interesting progression where you can upgrade the I guess like the I guess the level the level of uh, of your of your population, which is very cool. Anyway, let's spend some of this influence, boom, and we will unlock a warehouse, which is basically just a granary for not food. There we go. Uh, the other thing that we've got to bear in mind is that we probably want to try and influence all three of these, uh, all three of these these dudes. So labor, kingdom, and clergy. We want to influence all of them. The way that we influence clergy primarily by building religious structures. The way that we influence the kingdom is by supplying the king with stuff that he wants. And uh, the way that we influence the people is by doing stuff that the people want. It's, it's pretty it's pretty basic. Uh, this this uh, this little purple this little purple figure down here, splendor isn't super important at the moment. Uh, we don't require any splendor for the for the first two tiers of, or the first tier of kingdom and labor. We do require a little bit of splendor for the clergy first tier, but that's okay. We'll talk a little bit about splendor in a little bit. It's basically how much decoration you you stick you stick on certain buildings. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's unpause. What do we need to do? Promote your first newcomers. Build a lord manor. Assign a great hall. Uh, function to a Lord Manor room. At the end of the month, promote a villager to surf. Absolutely, I will indeed do that. Uh, and unlock a trade route to get tools. I will also, in fact, do that. Right. Six villagers, seven villagers lack space for housing. Let's address that first. So, as you may have noticed, we, uh, we, we managed to get our first residential, or we managed to get the ability to paint residential zones. So, now... Each and every area has got a different level of desirability. And I think, to be honest, we're going to want to try and make sure that... Yeah, this area... I kind of want to keep this area free for, uh, for, market, for markets and whatnot. But we'll zone this entire area as residential and we'll see, we'll see what our people do with that. They can just... They can just automatically go and build a house. I don't need to be involved in the construction process at all, which again, I really, really like. So somebody's decided to build a house right over yonder. Not entirely sure why. 
that's just going to fix itself up. I don't need to worry about that at all. Anyway, let's get back to business. Let's build a Lord Manor, shall we? Now, a Lord Manor is also another pretty darn cool uh, mechanic. So rather than placing a specific building, we actually build the building. And each and every different part of the building has a, you know, a bunch of different stats. So for example, the core will require 10 planks and 6 stone. I tell you what, we don't actually have any plank production at the moment. We're only, we're only making wood. So why don't we try and get a sawmill down here. We'll stick it right next to, we'll stick it right next to this, uh, to this lumber camp. There we go. Get uh, get the sawmill down and let's see if we can try and get some people equipped to said sawmill because I would like to once again reach 100% employment and I don't think that we're quite at that yet. No, we've got two people that are unemployed at the moment, which is less than ideal. Also, where are we going to build the Lord Manor? Not entirely sure that I know uh, exactly where it should go, but I guess we can we can work through that. Uh, sawmill, yeah, we got a sawmill, stonemasons, hut to produce polished stone in exchange for stone. Not super bothered with that right at this moment in time. I will, in fact, try and get a warehouse, though. That would, that would be a pretty big, pretty big important building to get done. So let's do, yeah, let's stick the warehouse in there. I don't love that location for a warehouse, but it's fine enough, really. I'm really just more, in fact, bothered with the sawmill. Let's prioritize the construction of that. By the way, this whole time, we're just, we're making a whole bunch of money by <laughs> by selling berries back to the same people that picked them. What idiots, eh? What idiots. I think we're fine for berries at the moment. 32 berries, as you can see up at the top there. Yeah, no worries. No worries on that front. We're, uh, we're totally fine. How's our, how's our first house looking? Uh, it's got a capacity of two. Right. That tells me that we perhaps need more residential zone sometimes sometimes when they build when they build when the ai builds a house in a particularly inconvenient place then uh, then that can mean that other houses don't get the opportunity to be built now i st i can buy another area and i can yeah i can buy another area if i get up to 500 gold but at the moment not at the stage where I'm anywhere near that level of uh, that level of cash. Anyway, sawmill. Let's get that done, and then let's see if we can try and uh, try and make a a start on this Lord Manor because I'd love to be able to get that done before the end of the month. Let's pause and see if we can try and give this a go. Let's get a core. Sure, I think we'll try and build it out towards the edge of this area over here. Sure, we'll build it like there. Uh, something else that uh, I should note is we can customize a lot of these parts to a great degree, and as you can see, the uh, the cost of the cost of building it scales. So does, in fact, the splendor, and so does the size, and so does the cost of gold. But I mean, none of that particularly matters. I'm going to build a very, very, very rudimentary Lord Manor. Now we can always come back in here later and make modifications, but I would really rather just build one sort of central component, and then we can just expand it as and when we please. Um, and, you know, there's no rush to do that. Uh, we can talk a little bit about the specificities of, um, of like, the different the different buildings and the, the different bits and bobs that you use to construct the Lord Manor. Uh, but for now, all that's important, basically, basically, is, uh, is that is that we're building the core, and the core will allow us to uh, to basically uh, basically just uh, utilize the function room. That's that's what's important. We will be able to we'll be able to build a function room, and um, it will be it will be great. We can assign we can assign the function room as a great hall, and that will make everybody happy. Apparently, no idea why, but there you go. Right, everyone is a little bit unhappy at the moment. All is good. Which is great. Wonderful. But we just don't have enough housing. We just don't have enough housing. Happiness is... Your happiness is okay. I think you've got a house. Do you have a house? Uh... No. Unable to find a... Unable to find a house close enough to my workplace. Yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. 
That's a bit of a bummer for you. I'm very sorry about that. Five out of 18 planks. We're making a start on the planks. I mean, I just want to... I probably just want to expand. I really do not want to zone any of this as residential. Also, you know, there is a disadvantage, of course, because it has low desirability. We might be able to fit another house in here. Maybe. Somebody might decide to build a house over here. Or they might just not. I think we're going to need just a heck of a lot more space. But there is almost nothing that I can do to uh, to get them to speed up the construction of houses. What I can do, however, is I could demolish this house. I could demolish this house and say, Hey, you guys have done such a, a bad job of planning this out by yourselves. You uh, You know, you should take another crack at it. However, I feel like that would be very, very demoralizing. And, you know, that's not the sort of person that I am. I like to consider myself a, a reasonably positive person. A reasonably upbeat individual. Uh, speaking of being reasonably upbeat, one of you guys is going to be is gonna be taken off lumber duty. And instead, you're going to be moved onto warehouse duty. And we're going to store... We're going to store wood and stone, maybe? Yeah, we're going to store wood and stone in the warehouse, at least for now. Not super worried about storing planks. We uh, we don't need to worry about that. From the one person uh, the one person who was passing, zero decided to join the village. That's a big old problem. We, uh, we don't want that. We want as many people joining the village as we possibly can. Right, so... We're very, very close to finishing off the Lord Manor. We just need a couple more planks. And you know what? Not a second too soon. Because, there we go. Building is complete. Lord Manor. Because as soon as it is completed, we are going to immediately give the core the selected function of a great hall. Which is wonderful. Envoys will be hosted here. Multiply building splendor by two. Not very relevant. Allows you to promote villager uh, villagers to higher statuses. Very relevant. Additional maintenance cost, 8 gold. I wish that wasn't relevant, but it is, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, we'll get somebody... We'll get somebody to, to officially... To officially help out in the, uh, in the function room. Brilliant. And this is gonna make... This is gonna make a massive, massive, massive impact on the game. So, now all we need to do is wait until day 7 comes around. And we'll be able to, we'll be able to upgrade, we'll be able to upgrade our villagers to serfs. How exciting is that? How exciting is that? It's very exciting. It was a rhetorical question, a very rhetorical question. I still am unbelievably perturbed at the fact that nobody seems to be building any homes. Right, you know what, let's take this, take this away from extraction zone and instead let's zone this entire area as residential the thing about residential about residential areas is that usually usually if uh if the people can avoid it they will not build in areas where the desirability is very very low so as you can see for the residential desirability here it's highest over in this area now, the reason that it's partly highest over to this area, I believe, is because there is an interaction between uh, between the distance or the time that it takes for an individual to get to work and the, you know, the desirability of a specific place to live. So, basically, the closer, the closer a house can be to somebody's place of work, the better. And the more highly uh, an individual will value that house. So, there you go. That's at least something that I can that I can give you some some good old knowledge, and indeed it looks like global happiness seems to be increasing. What's that? A random stranger decides to visit. I'm delighted. Decides to visit. Decides to stay. Actually, we're not letting them leave. Oh no 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 no, no 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 no, not at all. House is being complete. We're still in need of. Uh, we're still in need of, uh, of of some more houses, but that's a good start. Right, status promotion. My lord, for a certain cost, you can promote some of your villagers to higher statuses. Now, we've got... We've got serfs, right? So, let me let me use this as an example. So, you are just a regular... A regular dude. You're a, a status of a... Of a newcomer. You, however, are a serf. Now, do you see any differences here? You should see some differences. So, I mean, Lillian. Lillian has a housing requirement. 
Liliane also has a religious requirement, as opposed to James, who only has a water and a food requirement. Right? There you go. So basically, that is the evolution system explained. As, you know, as individuals progress up the ladder, as they become more and more qualified in being members of society, I guess, uh, they demand more and more stuff, which is very, very cool. I like that a lot. Your army is growing stronger. We will offer you some more challenging missions from now on. I don't have an army, but there you go. Thank you very much. I did indeed complete the quest. Unlock a trade route to get tools. We'll, uh, we'll talk about trade in just a second. However, I should draw everyone's attention to the fact that we now have another house, or another house under construction, should I say. So that is indeed very, very very nice and nothing to complain about we're gonna get our additional additional yep an additional dude i think you're that's you yeah i think that's you so that's nice what do we need to do we probably need to get a brand new berry collector so let's go and let's go and get that done as swiftly as we possibly can also we're kind of out of wood a little bit which is Less than ideal, but uh, you know what? It's fine. I can live with no wood for, for a little while. Planks are probably more useful anyway. And also, we've just built a couple of houses, and houses take uh, take up a bunch of wood, so that's fine. Right, let's talk about trade. So, we can go into we can go into the trading interface, and this is the trading interface. It's very, very basic. Very, very basic and not very complicated. That's the same way of saying... Two ways of saying the exact same thing. Right, Northbury, right? Northbury is the town which I would like to trade with under uh, under these circumstances. And we can unlock a trade route with them for 20 planks. So let's do that. Sign on the dotted line. Brilliant. Unlock a, a trade route to get tools. Fantastic. And uh, we get one free territory. Now, these are all of the resources that we can buy from the town. And these are all of the resources that they will buy from me. So immediately, I can see berries, polished stone and planks, all of which I could reasonably easily manufacture at this current stage, and I could sell to the town in order to gain a, a nice little a nice little bit of money. However, I do not currently have the ability to produce tools, therefore, I'm going to set up a, uh, a trade route with, uh, with the town. So, what we're going to go and do is we are going to... We are going to go to trading resources, that's right, we're going to go to trading resources, and we're going to go to tools, and we're going to say, buy until inventory reaches the value. And then I'm going to set this value to 20. So we're going to hold steady at 20 tools. And I'm in the granary. I wasn't, didn't mean to be in the granary. Then we're going to go into warehouse. And we're going to click tools here. And that should theoretically mean that we're going to wait until we have 20 tools in the warehouse. And then we're going to stop buying any more extra resources. So there you go. Right, set up our first trade route. We've, we've successfully managed to do that. Can I can I look at buying an extra bit of territory? I mean, what's the what's the desirability of houses around this area? I don't love this area for houses, by the way. I think I want to straight up just buy. Maybe I buy this area actually. There is a fishing hut which I can utilize at some point. But I'm not entirely convinced that that's what I want right now. You know what? Let's buy... Let's buy... Let's buy this patch. Sure. We can buy this patch when we get to 500, uh, 500 bucks, but we're, we're a little bit... A little bit away from that at the moment. Anyway, expand the residential... The residential zoning up a little bit here. Yeah, so basically we'll let it go... All the way around here. Cut out a little bit of space. I did say that I wanted to get a market over there. Uh, I'm going to cut this area down. So we're not going to have any residential stuff over here. And instead, we're going to return this all to uh, to full extraction. I.e. chopping down trees. Cool. Good stuff. And then, do I want to destroy both of these houses? I think I kind of do. Delete both of these houses. And then we will, uh, we will indeed, hopefully, start to see the construction of some new homes. He says, optimistically, hoping that that will work. 
Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. It should be totally fine. Uh, what else can we build? A rustic church. Well, that, to me, seems pretty darned important, doesn't it? I did talk about how we wanted to try and influence the clergy, and, uh, and influence them we shall. Now, a church is also... Much like a manor house, much like a market, it is, uh, it is a, it is a, it is a puzzle that you put together and, uh, and you improve over the course of time. Yeah, sure, we'll stick it down on the border. We'll get a door on the front. Wonderful. Do I need anything else? I do, in fact, need another bit. I need another bell tower. So I've got a core, I've got a door, and now I need a bell tower. I mean, we could put that at the back. Yes, put that at the back. However, I do actually want to make that a little bit taller. So that it doesn't look as garbage. You know, so there is a very... Yeah, let's get a cross on the on a little top up there. Sure, that's really good. I like that. I'm very happy with that. And it's kind of in the residential area anyway. So it's going to make a, a pretty big impact there, I think. Does everyone have a home? Everyone will have a home after this house is finished being built. Right, so I think that moving to this sort of setup is uh, is a lot better. The desirability in this area, much, much higher than the desirability over here. At least the desirability is bordering on average. Desirability over here is very, very high. Maybe I should have bought this bit. Somebody, I was waiting to say somebody's building a house over here, but that's not, that's me. <laughs> that's me building a church. Right, so uh, we have got an envoy also more people have decided to join up. I need to equip these people with jobs. Uh, yes, so an envoy from Image 1, very important guy, is requesting an audience. Let's click on him and see what is happening. My lord, we need to choose who we want to help. Right, so, you know how I was talking about diplomacy earlier? Yeah, well, this is, this is the diplomacy screen. So, uh, every so often, we will receive an envoy, and we will have to make a decision. We'll have to make a decision which quest we take on. Now, usually my understanding is, is that um, the quests are all the same. So this quest, for example, is uh, is to give 30 berries to either the king, the clergy, or the people. And of course, whichever one, whichever one we decide to help, we will, uh, we will get a little, a little extra, a little extra bonus, a little extra influence from them. So that is kind of nice. Is there anyone that I particularly care about at the moment? Uh, oh, the kingdom will allow me to build a, a wooden keep. We can get that unlocked right now. I mean, I don't really need anything. A fisher's hut. Let's try and get a fisher's hut. So let's um, let's support the people, shall we? We'll try and get a bunch of influence with the people. Now, we've got a time limit on this. We've got 30 berries, or we need to give 30 berries to the people within 59 days. So that shouldn't be too darn difficult, especially if we assign a couple more people to the gathering hut. We've got one unemployed individual at the moment who is going to do, uh, yeah, probably, yeah, lumberjacking, woodcutting, sure, whatever. Just get to work on that as quickly as possible, and that will allow us to process just a little bit more wood. I think probably we've got enough foragers, although we might need to bump that up to a second gathering hut, but we can, you know, we can, we can deal with that a little bit later on. Now, also, there is a another thing that I can do. What is it? It's um oh, I can't remember. I cannot for the life of me remember how to do it. But there is a way that I can stockpile there's a way that I can stockpile resources and it's really irritating me because I can't remember I can't remember how to do it. There is a button that I can click somewhere. There's a button that I can click somewhere which will allow me to stockpile berries and that will that will allow me to store that will allow me to store up to 30 as it stands we're just going to have to wait for 30 to arrive at the uh, at the at the granary which i mean to be honest should be totally fine but it's just something to to keep in mind it's just something to keep in mind i can't for the life of me remember how to do that that's unbelievably irritating oh yes i will unlock the wooden keep let's unlock the wooden keep yeah let's do that not territory. Oh, message from the kingdom. We shall allow you to establish an outpost on your territory. As such, you will be able to participate in military campaigns for your liege. Do not forget that this is a privilege. Yes, I will indeed build a wooden keep. It's not a priority at the moment, but it will it will get done at some point in the future. 
absolutely absolutely gonna gonna do it at some point in the future but not now I cannot for the life of me I cannot for the life of me remember how to remember how to stockpile berries it's it it completely completely escapes me it completely escapes me but that's that's fine it's, I mean, it's going to continue to irritate me, but, you know, there you go. Ah, it's this. It's this. It's this one. I remembered. Okay, so now we're going to stockpile the berries, which should theoretically mean that, uh, that the resource is going to be stockpiled, and the resource, I think, is going to be stockpiled inside the granary, which means nobody is going gonna, is gonna to be fed for a little while. There's going to be no markets. Uh, there's going to be no berries at the markets. Man, I'm so glad that I remembered how to do that. Anyway, we need to stockpile up to 30. Then we'll ship off the the berries to the to the people, and that should uh, you know that should make everyone happy. Well, I say everyone happy. It'll make mostly me happy. Also, that's a brand new employee. I mean, a brand new, a brand new villager, a brand new villager. Tell you what we might do. Tell you what we might do. We might get another gatherer's hut purely because this is taking a darn long time, and I feel we are gonna need more and more food as we get you know, more and more people. I mean, we've got five newcomers, for example, and uh, and we're coming up to the end of the month, which is... which is a bit of an opportunity, but also a little bit of a problem, because it means that we're going to have to decide whether we want to, uh, you know, when to promote anyone. And I think we will. How many unemployed people do we have at the moment? Two unemployed people, so we can stick these guys both into foraging. That shouldn't be too difficult at all to do. Everyone seems to be unhappy. Seven villagers are lacking food. Look, I cannot be responsible for this. We've got to prioritize trade. We've got to prioritize trade. It's It's, it's got to be done. Come on, get back to work, please, people. You're on your free time at the moment, looking to fill your needs, i.e. looking for food. Just go harvest those berries, but don't eat them. And, you know, just stick them, stick them in the granary. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Alright, you know what? Maybe I'll... Maybe I will, uh... Maybe I'll release the blockade temporarily. I'll allow some berries to be sold at the market. Primarily because... I don't want my people to be that grumpy with me. Yeah. Not a big fan. Not a big fan of grumpiness. And also, I like money. I very, very much like money. How are we doing on the rustic church? We're not doing too badly, actually. Not doing too badly at all. Most of the stone is already in place. Almost 50% of the uh, of the planks are in place, and the tools are also about to be moved as well. When the tools are used, we'll see our total supply go down, obviously, and we'll have to rebuy the tools. So, uh, so the trade route will just sort of stay there up until I change it. Anyway, uh, what do we want to do? We, we want to upgrade, upgrade everyone's capability. We want to we want to do it? Yeah, we want to... Yeah, sure. Promoting villagers will allow you to generate extra uh, extra revenue from their new needs. Sure. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. Right, what have we got? New zone, reforestation is available. Sheep farm, weaver hut, tailor's workshop, wheat farm, uh, windmill, bakery, and a forester's camp. All now available. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I do indeed suspect that... All of those buildings do exactly what they say on the tin. In fact, I know for a fact that they do that they all do exactly what they uh, what they say on the tin. How are we doing? Have we satisfied the food needs? I think so. Most of the food needs have been fulfilled. And I tell you what, everyone is about to get super duper happy as soon as we uh, we get this church sorted out, and then everyone will be able to. We'll be able to share in a little bit of prayer. And that's going to make me very happy. And also everyone in the, the village very happy. I said that it's going to make me very happy. What I mean by that is that I'm very delighted that we're going to be providing more of the needs of my uh, of my villagers. Anyway, so it turns out that getting that second gathering hut totally made a big difference. Even with the current rate of, uh, of berry outflow, I think... We should manage to get to we should manage to get to 30 berries long before the 42 day deadline hits us. I'm not worried about that. Not worried about it at all. Also, is somebody trying to build a house over here? What is this mess? Is that two houses or is that one house? 
Okay, not entirely sure. Also, oh, I tell you what, this, I think this is a separate house. Yes, this is a separate house. So what we are witnessing right here is we are uh, witnessing a, a density upgrade, which is actually quite interesting. So rather than just having two people stay in a specific house, this house is going to be upgraded to a density level of two, which is very, very cool indeed. And so, uh, you know, as soon as that building has been upgraded, oh, fantastic, new people. Uh, as soon as that building has been upgraded, we'll, uh, we'll be able to fit more people into it, which is just wonderful. Right, we're going to be assigning a brand new a brand new villager to the other gathering huts because we are oh, we keep on just it's up and down and 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 up and down the berries uh, the berry situation is very fluid i will say that very very fluid you know what let's let's go on the let's go on the offensive again and start stockpiling berries it's got to be done it's got to be done two villagers are lacking are lacking housing not my problem Right, can I equip our brand new villager with a job? I think you're the brand new villager. Yeah, you are indeed. There we go. Get on the gathering equipment and get to the berry bush. Straight away. Yes, please. Has the church been built yet? Ah, yes. We're working on the tower at the back. All of the stone has been delivered. Not all of the planks have been delivered. And uh, the tools are yet to be delivered as well. But that's okay. Right, come on. Let's get this resource stockpiled as quickly as we possibly can. There are still some berries in the market. And I don't think that they're allowed to be taken out of the granary. Not as far as I'm aware anyway. So we shouldn't see we shouldn't see this number increase and we shouldn't see this number decrease. Actually, I, I I'm with you. Okay, so I see this is a total number of berries. But the, the number of berries in the granary is actually slightly different. So the total number of berries are, I think, from what I can see, it looks a little bit buggy. There's berry table part two. So that's presumably the berries on the table as well as as well as berries that have been reserved and also berries potentially that are in the gathering hut that need to be moved across. I would guess if I had to make if I had to make an educated or even an uneducated guess. Yes, I know everyone is going to be hungry. Everyone is going to start complaining about the fact that I'm not feeding them. And you know what? It's true. All of the rumors that you've heard entirely true. Another person has still despite this despite this ongoing uh, this ongoing nonsense uh, have decided have decided to join the village, which, I mean, is flattering, really. is flattering, if nothing else. So, as soon as we hit 30, 30 berries in the... 30 berries in the granary, anyway. 30 berries, so full 30 berries in storage. Uh, we should see... We should indeed see this little X turn to a tick, which will make my life much easier. We're up to 28 now. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, there we go. Fantastic. We'll get those berries delivered, and then we will immediately stop stockpiling the berries, and we can go back to selling them, hopefully before too many people go hungry. Anyway, the quest has been completed. Uh, we get 10 uh, influence with the people, and we get 200 gold, which is very, very nice, and just in time as well, because image one is back. And what do we want to do? Deliver 20 fish. I cannot deliver any fish at the moment because I do not have the capability to do so. Uh, so, I think rather than trying to overpromise anyone, I'm just going to say I'm keeping it all, which means that I won't really participate in the uh, in the influence gaining exercise. Anyway, come on, let's get this church done. Let's get this. This is this is taking far too long. Um, I also would like to try and see if I can pick up this bit of territory over here. I think I also need to try and get... I need to try and get the uh, the Fisher's Hut. Yeah, so I need 20 Serfs and I need 6... I need 6 Splendor. So, this is where it gets a little bit funky. Each and every estate has its own Splendor. So, for example, the clergy... The clergy's Splendor primarily comes from making a really fancy church. Uh, the king's Splendor comes from... Uh, comes from the keep, which I haven't yet built, and the splendor for the people comes from the Lord Manor. There we go. Anyway, uh, brilliant. 
Plus 10 influence with the clergy. Fantastic. Does that allow me to unlock anything by any chance? I don't think it does. It does, actually. Barely. But there we go. Oh, uh, yes, because, of course, our church has 7.5 base splendor. Nice. I mean, we get some additional parts for the church. Eh, it's not very interesting, but it's something at least. Anyway, uh, what's the capacity of the church now? It's 20. Brilliant. So we've got faithful attendance uh, of the church. And that should indeed mean that everyone's happiness goes through the roof because everyone will have the ability to go to church and everyone wants to go to church because, well, most people in the town are serfs. So, you know, I'm pretty happy that we're, uh, that we're, uh, that we're working towards the same objectives here. We're, we're making everyone happy. Everyone is a winner. Right, can I build a wooden keep? I would indeed like to build a wooden keep. What do we need? 50 planks? Unbelievably, that is doable at this moment in time. Again, I'm gonna adopt a very, very simple wooden keep layout. I think that's all we need. I don't even need to stick a roof on this, uh, on this place. I probably should, because otherwise it'll look pretty stupid. But that is going to take me over the number of planks that I actually have at this moment in time. So we're going to have to wait a little bit for our, for all of the planks to be fully assembled. i tell you what I should do. I should store planks in the warehouse as well, because at the moment, I think we're storing the maximum number of planks that we possibly can store in the sawmill. So if we move the planks over to the warehouse, then that indeed means that we'll be able to, uh, you know, we'll be able to produce just a few more. Just a few more. That's the plan, anyway. I think it should. I think it should work uh, completely flawlessly. Hey, hey, hey! Look at this. Look at this. So this entire thing is one house. That's a different house up at the back there. That's a different house up at the back there. All right. This is turning into a, a lovely little housing estate. This is this is real nice. I like this a lot. Density two. Very very dense. I like the density there. I'm big fan of the density. Anyway, where's the where's the wooden keep? I can you can barely see it. In fact, you can't see it. You definitely cannot see it. You definitely cannot see what's going on. But there you go. Uh, I mean, financially, we're we're in an, uh, an iffy situation, and I must say that it would be good if I could, in fact, I tell you what I'll do. What I will do is build a stone mason hut. I'll build a stone mason hut right next to the uh, stone cutter's lodge. And we'll prioritize this building. In fact, I can prioritize this building because we need to build cloth. And in order to build cloth, we need to get a sheep farm. All right, so let's flip and do this then. Let's do all of these different finangled bits and bobs. Build a sheep farm. Then I need to get a weaver's hut, which I will get right here if I can get the money and then that will allow me to oh my God. okay all right this is this is this is complicated right ditch this forget that I need to apparently get a weaver's hut first all right what have we got here Ooh, very very interesting indeed so we can upgrade our newcomers two of them are unemployed not ideal at, at this moment but hey ho we'll, we'll fix that in a second uh, we can promote these guys to serfs if indeed we want to however However, 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 we can also promote we can also promote a couple of people to commoners. Now, Lillian, if I upgrade you to a commoner, what are you going to demand? You are going to demand housing. I think that's slightly better housing. You're also going to demand goods, and I think that that is a second yeah, that is a second food uh, tab. So that means that we're going to have to give you basically double the food in order to keep you happy. Uh, so, I mean, I've done that purely for a demonstrational purpose. I'm gonna upgrade... I'm gonna upgrade everyone to become a serf, but I'm not going to upgrade anyone to become a, uh... To become a commoner. Not yet, other than, of course, um, Lillian, who is, who is our, uh... I guess our guinea pig, really. Anyway, we want to get a sheep farm in order to get the cloth needed in order to get a stonemasons together. Because what we really need to try and do is we really just need to try and sell some of this stuff. Uh, we can sell some berries, although I would prefer to sell polished stone. Alternatively, I don't even know why, why I'm doing this. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to build that. I should just sell the planks. I mean, I've got a gargantuan number of planks. Sure, a lot of them are going into this keep up here uh, at the back right-hand corner. But that's... That's okay. Uh, so let's sell above 20. So any 
any uh, any time the number of our planks goes above 20, we'll immediately start selling these selling these resources to to other places, which is which is wonderful, wonderful, very very good. Uh, same with berries. Anytime our berry resources go above, let's say go above 30. Anytime they go above 30, we'll start selling. There we go. So the thing about trading is that it takes rather a long time. So Rudolf, Rudolf is the, uh, I'm working on a transport mandate. Indeed you are, Rudolf. Now, you're going to take these planks. You're going to take these planks back to the warehouse. However, 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 somebody. Ah, the trader. The trader has just come. And I think picked up some of these planks. So I think that should mean that we'll see. I don't know if we've seen the money already or if we will see the money as soon as he arrives back at his house. And by back at his house, I mean as soon as he phases out of existence on the map. Which is going to be fairly soon actually. We'll keep a little eye on this. 100, 127, 127 coins. Maybe we've already got the coins. Uh, presumably, we've already got the coins. Uh, but yeah, we definitely, 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 definitely benefit a heck of a lot from trade. Oh, our finances are fluctuating a little bit. And there is definitely a trade component to our uh, to our income there, which I, which I like. I like a lot, actually. But there we go. This is all really, really good. Uh... You guys can be assigned a job there. You can be assigned a job there. Is that everyone? Is that everyone fully employed? No. Robin still needs a job. Well, I mean, you can be our sheep farmer, Robin. How about that? What an honor, eh? What an absolute honor. 93 happiness. Somebody's still lacking a home, but that is going to be rectified as soon as we as soon as we upgrade the density of this house over here, which is very, very exciting. Five tools needed in order to finish off the sheep farm. We're very, very close to getting that done. Very, very close. And then we will be able to make some sheepies. Now, I know for a fact that there is, uh, there is, there is some shenanigans that can happen with sheepies. First of all, let's assign a villager. We can actually only assign one villager. Anyway, so the way that sheep's work, the way that sheep's work is that uh, is that we can spawn them in. We spawn them in, and what do you know? They just, they just exist in the world. They can grow up a little bit. They only operate within a certain area. What I mean by that is that they're not going to go wandering off. It may look like they're going to go wandering off, but they basically exist within a big circle around the sheep farm. However, the thing that I want everyone to know is that there is no limit to the number of sheeps that you can have. And so there is this wonderful little text adventure that you can go through. Come on, don't abuse seriously stop think about the neighbors that smell now don't go to complain to the devs if the game crashes i mean there is this there is this adventure that you can go through um just through the sheep spawning menu which i absolutely adore i think it's very very cool they'll ask you how many sheep did you spawn if they do don't answer because they'll be like da that was previsible what did you think are you trying to see if there's a black sheep in there because there isn't. Your persistence honors us. OMG, a black sheep. Impossible. You see it? That's right. Right over yonder. We uh, we spawned the black sheep. Sorry, I could not know for sure. I'm just a game button. Well, I should get back to my normal button life now. Have fun overpopulating the land with sheep. There we go. And that's it. That's the story. And it just sticks on. Come on, don't abuse from, uh, from now on. But we did indeed manage to spawn ourselves a black sheep which I which I just adore. I think that's very very cool. Uh, how are we getting on with this keep? I mean it, I feel like it could be look at look at the look at the sheer number of sheep that we've got. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Have we got any unemployed people? We got one unemployed person. Fine. Uh well we can get a weaver's hut. Getting a weaver's hut would probably be a pretty darn good step in the right direction. Uh, Weaver's Hut will allow us to turn that wool into into cloth, which is very cool. That's the front door over there. So let's go and set that up. Brilliant. 
Also, you can see that the path is sort of atrophied as, as fewer and fewer people have started or continued to use the path, should I say. It's just sort of disappeared, which I just love. It's all part of the... It's all part of the nice sort of background work that the game does to make... to make the environment feel real. You know, the same with the whole houses thing. You know, I, I like the fact that I don't have to manually place houses. I like the fact that I don't have to upgrade the houses. They do it automatically. If I don't want the houses to be, um to be upgraded, I can, you know, I can uncheck the box, but I do want them to be upgraded, because that's all, that's all what the game does, and I, and I thoroughly enjoy, you know, just letting the game, yeah, do what it does, it's very, very nice, right, let's get the Weaver Hut prioritized, because it is slightly more important, also, I mean, we've been doing a fair amount of tree chopping recently, which makes me think that we should probably try and get a Forester Camp, so, a Forester Camp will, I mean, do pretty much exactly what you expect to do. It will basically just replant trees, which is kind of nice. Uh, we've got a reforestation zone, and I will reforest this specific area. I say reforest it. I will reforest it after the uh, forester has been built. But until then, I'll just zone it out. Because why not? I can, right? I totally can. Right, how are things looking? Things are looking pretty darn good, actually. We've got a lot of stone. We could probably ease off on the stone production a little bit. Lily and Dominique have been going pretty hardcore at the stone from the very start. Brand new envoy. Uh, bread. I mean, let me be brutally honest. We're not nearly to the point where we're able to, to produce bread. I mean, we've unlocked all the buildings in order to produce bread. A wheat farm. That's necessary. Windmill. That's necessary. And a bakery. All of that is necessary. But, I mean, you know, it's... Not something that I think we'll be able to do. I, I tell you what I what I should also get here. A, a tailor's workshop. It'll allow us to produce common clothes in exchange for cloth. Now, this is pretty darn important because, as you will note, we upgraded we upgraded Lillian. We upgraded Lillian, and she now has a goods requirement. So, I mean, she's going to be pretty unhappy with the fact that she's not able to get, uh, not able to get any goods. Now, it just so happens that clothes are goods, and the way in which we go about, uh, we go about, we go about organizing the clothes, is if we go into the market, that's right, and then we go into edit, we can set a goods stall down, which is exactly what I want to do. I mean, we can also set multiple food stalls down. I'm going to set down the good stall over here. And you know what? I might, in fact, get a little flag as well. How cool is that? Let's get a little flag. Start construction. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't need to be done right now. It can, it can sort of be put on the back burner. It's not a big deal. From the two people who were passing by, one decided to join the village. Come on. I'm on 92 happiness. I feel like... I feel like a lot of people should be joining the village. It's a great place to be. It's a great place to be. It really is. I tell you what, maybe it's so good that we need to see if we can try and get a second builder. I think that's what we're going to do. I mean, we've already got one level 6 builder. Lillian, of course. The legendary Lillian. The only commoner amongst uh, amongst serfs. But, uh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get you. I think you're the trader, actually, aren't you? Yeah, you're the trader. And you're going to pick up a whole bunch of my planks. I say that. You're not going to. You're not going to. You're not going to do that. Very sorry about that. No, we don't have enough planks to, to start trading yet, I'm afraid. Uh, Weaver's Hut. We'll get somebody into the Weaver's Hut straight away. And we've got one more... One more person. What do I want to do with that one more person? I don't think that there's anything that I really need to do right now. Um, we're in a pretty... We're in a pretty good position. I feel like I don't really need to reinforce that too much. Kind of want this flip and keep to be finished. I mean, that would just be fantastic. Can I request that it's done slightly more speedily, please? I mean, I can request it all that I like, but apparently it makes very little difference. Anyway, the whole point of getting a wooden keep is that it allows us to contribute to the uh, to the king's the king's military campaign. So there's a a slight military interface, and I should have mentioned right at the start of the hour, is that this game is still in alpha, so 
you can see it down in the, the bottom right hand corner here. So there's a lot of changes that are going to be made. I, I suspect that the military manager is probably one of them. Uh, we'll we'll get a bunch of uh, available missions that we can that we can take part in. Uh, you know, at the behest of the king. It's up to the king when we when we fight. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. That's pretty much what the keep does. We completed the quest as well, which is quite nice. Uh, so that's good. The kingdom has noticed your keep and might call on you to aid in a military campaign. I shall think about training soldiers then. Indeed, and you know, we can just equip villagers to, uh... We can equip villagers to the keep. Uh, sure, novice Robin. We'll, we'll, we'll train one soldier, I guess. Uh, we've also got Barbara, who needs to go somewhere. Ideally, you could go into the tailor's workshop. You can't go into the tailor's workshop because we ain't got polished stone. We need to get polished stone, so let's get a stonemason hut. There we go. Get that done because we need cloth in order to make that, and I do indeed believe that we now have 11 cloth. Hurrah! We did it. And also, we now have a forester camp. Uh, Barbara, you can go and become a someone. I'm gonna repopulate all of the trees. I don't, I don't know. And Barbara should immediately just start sowing all of the... Yep, yeah, look, there we go. Immediately start sowing tree seeds in this area. So, we're gonna replant this area. And hopefully the, uh, the, uh, the lumber... Lumber woodcutter people uh, are going to be able to operate in this area exclusively going forward. Because I kind of like having... I kind of like having sort of forest and trees just dotted around the map. And it's nicer if we're able to, to draw down on... I guess, like, our artificial supplies, or supplies that we, um, that we plant. It just seems a little bit more, seems a little bit nicer, from my perspective, anyway. Oh, it's the end of the month. It's the end of the month. We are, uh, we are absolutely dirt poor at the moment, presumably because we've been buying some tools from the trader, uh, because our number of tools has dropped below 20, in accordance with our, uh, with our trading policy at the moment. We are buying tools in whenever we have less than 20 tools. Um, and we're not selling a huge amount of stuff at the moment. However, I think, you know, going forward, selling off uh, polished stone might indeed be uh, be an idea. Uh, you know what? On that note, ladies and gents, we're going to wrap up this little look at Foundation. Uh, this is a great game. This is an absolutely fantastic little game. I would thoroughly recommend it uh, if indeed you're interested. There's a link down in the description to, uh, to the Steam store where you can pick this game up. It's fantastic. Um, it's published by Polymorph Games. If you're interested in seeing some more of this game, then by all means, please do indeed feel free to swing by my twitch.tv channel, and uh, I'm absolutely certain that I'll be playing this uh, consistently in the future. Thanks as ever to my fantastic Patreon supporters who help make videos like this possible. I'll see you next time, folks. Bye.